even as you get older, how can you increase your energy? How can you have better skin? How can you have better hair? How can you have sexual vitality? How do you have a sharp mind and a healthy body, regardless of your age, right? And so these experts are coming together in an online summit, which is free for your listeners to register for, by the way. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Open your mind and let go of the fears of midlife and aging. Some people see midlife as a time of stress and overwhelm, but we're not gonna do that. We see midlife as an opportunity for continued learning and growth. Life's a journey, not a destination. It's a continual process and can get better all the time. And the best part, you can write your own rules. So in each Midlife Magic episode, we're going to have conversations with interesting and cool people that will give you the inspiration and know-how on how to live your best life. Are you ready? Let's go. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Midlife Magic. My guest this week is Faraz Khan, host of the Anti-Aging Hacks podcast. Faraz first started his podcast so he could help his parents be healthier and more active so that they could enjoy fun experiences together and fulfill some of his mom's dreams of traveling the world. So he began researching ways and hacks to slow down the aging process. He began attending conferences on health and anti-aging, listened to podcasts, and was reading published scientific studies and a plethora of books. And what he learned was amazing. He discovered that over the past 15 years, all the scientific advancements, studies of older populations, and a vastly improved understanding of our biology have resulted in exciting information on how to slow down the aging processes today and turn back our biological clock by many years and get back the energy, skin, hormones that we had many years ago. Furthermore, there are very promising developments unfolding over the next five to 10 years that make diseases like heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, and diabetes a thing of the past. We will be living like our much younger selves full of radiance, vibrancy, and energy. And so his podcast was born. And on his show, he shares the latest and best information on how to slow down and even reverse our aging. And every week, he interviews a renowned and published expert on a certain topic in the exciting world of anti-aging and longevity. So imagine getting the best and most current anti-aging and longevity expert advice in the world for free in a podcast. Faraz hopes that you will join him in understanding that making 60 the new 30 may no longer have to be just a silly catchphrase. And on top of his podcast, he is now hosting the Anti-Aging Summit, and he's going to answer one question. How do you build a healthy body, a sharp mind, have all day energy, look good naked, and have beautiful skin and hair even as you age? Yeah, that's the question he's going to answer. The summit is taking place December 14th through the 16th, and we'll have 20 plus health and anti-aging experts, and it's 100% free. So if you want to sign up for the summit, head to my show notes and grab the link there. So are you ready to hear Faraz's top anti-aging tips for midlifers? I am, so let's jump into it. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Midlife Magic. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard, and I'm excited to have my friend Faraz Khan on the show today. Welcome, Faraz. It's great to have you. Lisa, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Oh, my gosh. You are welcome. So you and I connected months ago on Instagram, I think, and Mm -hmm. you've always just been so full of information and knowledge and I love your episodes, your show. So will you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So I have a background in technology and I went to school to get a degree in computer science and I got a master's degree and I did that for many years and I was in the corporate world and then I started doing consulting. So I went to a bunch of companies and I learned what they were doing and how their businesses were operating. And during this time, I worked with some big, large biopharma life sciences companies, such as Amgen Pharmaceuticals and others in Southern California, which got me into the drug development process, the health world, how that portion of the world works where they're trying to create drugs, for example, now for COVID. But I just realized that it cost $2 billion to get a drug out the door and get it approved. And the costs were massive. And these weren't, at least the people I worked with, weren't some crazy crony companies. These were good old scientists trying to figure out solutions, right? They wanted to do the right thing for people, but it was just stuck in this crazy cogwheel of, you know, the FDA regulations has got to be safe. It's got to be, all of this has to be 
proven. Plus, they've got to be able to patent the drug and make a lot of money on the back end because they're spending so much. So I got to learn a lot of how medicine was being created. And at the same time, I was very interested in biohacking and improving my biology as a function of either getting enough sunlight or improving the way that I lived or supplements. And then thirdly, at the same time, my parents were also aging. So every time I'd go see them, I just see them getting older before my eyes. They would have more wrinkles. They would be walking slower. Their energy was lower. And I was like, man, I've spent all this time away from them doing my thing. And all they want to do is spend time with me. So how can I help them rejuvenate them, slow down their aging, even reverse their aging so that we can have some experiences together. We can travel the world together. We can have some fun. You know, like my mother wants to go travel the world. So I'm like, how can I help make that happen for her? So that's how I got into this world. And I started digging in and this is a crazy new field that's coming up, anti-aging and longevity. We anticipate that very soon in the near future, we're going to be living decades longer in a very healthy way. So that was the background, the impetus behind how I got in and how I'm now really even deeper into this field. Yeah, it's incredible. I'm so, I love your show. I love what you share. You have some amazing information. I'm always excited when a new episode launches. So I know you and I kind of said we want to talk about best tips or favorite tips for anti-aging once you hit that 40 plus mark. How old are you, by the way? I don't even think I know. Yeah, I just turned 40 this year. So it's a big number. Yes, welcome. Welcome to the (laughs) Well, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm 47. And when I turned 40, that's when I had my big like, aha moment about everything. Mm -hmm. And one of those everything moments I had was, you know, health and wellness moved from a vanity or an aesthetics ideal to Mm -hmm. a longevity and anti aging and living my best optimal and vibrant health. And I think that's why I'm so drawn to what you share, because the things that you share are doable. You're not suggesting like these crazy things, right? So will you give us your best tips once you hit that 40? What do you feel like your top ones, I guess we should say? I'll call them that, your top tips. Yeah, for sure. I think my number one tip has got to be optimizing your sleep because you know, we run around, we're like, oh, I'm taking this supplement, I'm taking that supplement. I talk, I talk to a lot of peers, friends, and we compare, you know, what the tips and tricks are. But I think we have to go back to the basics on this one first. We have to fix our sleep. And there's a lot of ways to fix your sleep. But one of the things that I typically do as a, you know, working with the working with nature is very important. And so circadian rhythms are what I follow every day. And what that really means is that follow the rhythm of the sun, depending on where you live. So I try to wake up early in the morning and then I'll go outside, get a couple of minutes of sunlight, have some movement, get, get the body moving, get the lymphatic system moving, but I'll get some sun and I'll look at the sun with my eyes. And that is so that all the receptors in my body, on my skin and my eyes get awakened and they say, okay, it's time to go, it's morning. So all the clocks in my body get reset to, okay, it's the morning time, it's time to go. And then in the afternoon, I'll go out for about 10 to 15 minutes to get the vitamin D sunshine. And this is anywhere from 11 to 3 p.m. I'll cover my face some days, but that's to get the vitamin D. And then in the evening, I'll go for a run right around when the sun's setting as well. So again, I'm getting that sunlight when the sun's waning. And so the receptors in my skin and my eyes get to know what time it is and the body clock set. So that way I fall asleep. Melatonin, which is the hormone that enables us to sleep, that makes us drowsy, gets released at the right time because now your body's aligned with the sun. What's happening too much these days is that we're staying up because of electricity, thankfully. We're staying up till 1, 2, 3 a.m. And we have junk lights, blue lights on. We're watching TV as we're falling asleep. And that's really messing with our our rhythms because our our eyes don't know what time it is anymore because there's blue light at all times. And so one of the keys is I limit blue light at night and I get aligned with the circadian rhythm and I do a lot of things to optimize my sleep because once you can optimize your sleep, a lot of other things open up to you. 
Yes. So that's that is, my first tip. Yeah. I love that. I love that tip. And as a therapist, someone who preaches to my clients all the time, you've got to get your sleep for so many reasons. And that's like the building block for health and wellness. If you don't have your sleep, you know, really, what do you have? It's very difficult. Are there any other tips that you have for optimizing sleep? I like the one about limiting blue light, turning off the electronics. I mean, I definitely notice a difference when I do those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For example, I'll run, I'll just run through some of mine. So as you mentioned, I turn off my Wi-Fi at night mm -hmm. because I don't want the signal touching my body, going through my body. So I'll do that. I will turn off all the blue lights or dim the lights. If you have dimmers, I would dim them just to kind of replicate what it would be like to be living 200 years ago or 500 years ago. How did humans live for tens of thousands, millions of years? in the darkness, right? And so it's all amber lighting at night. I try to limit blue lights and tube lights, but amber lighting. And then cold temperature or colder temperature in your bedroom is also very good for sleep. So I try to maintain a temperature around 70, 65, between 65 and 70 degrees. And then I use a, a sleeping pad that cools me as I sleep because I use a memory foam mattress. And for people that do use memory foam, they'll know that it heats up it absorbs the heat from your body and then it you know, releases that heat at night. So you wake up at 2 a.m., very hot. And so I use a, a cooling pad on top of my bed to cool me. Uh, temperature is low. Again, uh, you know, the amber lights we talked about, but I have these glasses that I wear. They're, they, look, they look pretty nerdy, but uh, these are amber or blue blocking glasses that reduce some of the blue, that reduce the blue light. Now, the other thing I was gonna say is that in terms of sound, it's important for you to block the sounds that are coming in. If you live in a busy area, wear some earplugs because they'll reduce the sound coming in. That way you don't get woken up or jarred awake at 1, 2 a.m. and then your mind starts racing as well. Another tip that I learned from a friend of mine was that if you remember, start remembering things, because you know we lay in bed and we think about everything. We think about high school and we think about embarrassing moments. And... Uh, if we just started remembering things instead of thinking about things, mm -hmm. let's say that if you think about where did I sit in third grade? Like where was my seating in the class and who sat behind me, who sat in front of me and what kind of games did we play and how did they help? These things surprisingly uh, help you fall asleep faster as well. Mm -hmm. So those are some basic tips you can use. I don't want to get into supplements because that's the next level. Right. No, but these are great tips. So I love that tip about trying to remember. I've done that many times. I, the hardest one for me to remember, I try to remember my high school schedule for each grade. And mm -hmm. I can't tell you. <laughs> That's a hard one. I can remember like senior year, but after that or before that, I don't, I don't know what I was doing, but I, I was there. I graduated high school. <laughs> so mm -hmm. those are, those are great tips. Okay. So the foundation for anti-aging is going to start with our sleep. Then what do you look for or where do you turn next? Yeah. So a couple of things next. Number two is movement. Mm -hmm. If you just look at the human body, it's so beautiful. It's such an amazing piece of art and science as well, but it's meant to move, right? We have two legs and we're meant to move. So it's very important that you get that movement going. We have cardiovascular health that's related to blood flow that goes around our body. We have glymphatic systems that take back all the waste from the body back to the heart and the liver for you know, release. And so there's gotta be these fluids that are moving in our body. And it's important that we move to get these fluids, fluids moving. You've heard that exercise improves the cardiovascular system. It improves your blood flow. That's why, because you're moving, you're pumping, and that really helps. So what I do is movement is, uh, I get up in the morning and I'll take a 10 minute walk. And then in the afternoon, I'll take a 20 minute walk. And then in the evening, generally I work out. Now, if we study the world's longest lived societies, you don't have to go to the gym and like throw weights around for 45 minutes every day. You really don't. Most of these l experts that have studied these long lived societies have found that these people just do a lot of constant movement throughout the day, right? It's like, for example, right now when I'm talking to you, I'm standing up. I use a standing desk all day long. That is an example of just movement all day long because you're not sitting, you're not crouched over. So as much as possible, listeners, try to incorporate just movement in your day. Of course, you know, going and working out and getting those beautiful muscles is a plus, and I'll take that. But at the minimum, 
take a couple of walks, 20 minutes each, just get out there, look at trees. There's some research now that's showing that just looking at nature and looking at trees helps calm you down and it's better beneficial to your body. So that's sure. the second one. The third one, obviously everyone's going to ask about is what about nutrition? What do I do? So my tips, I don't get into these diets. There's too many of them. There's the keto, there's vegan, there's the new carnivore diet. There's probably tens of diets we could talk about. But what I recommend to people is to eat whole foods as much as possible. Eat single nutrient foods like they would be found in nature. More often than not, these are all, these have low glycemic index because they have fiber in them. And therefore you want to get that huge release of sugar in your body. And that's important to live a long life. And we'll talk about sugar in just a bit, but to talk about foods, eat whole foods that you find in nature, try to eat salads, lots of greens. If you're going to eat meat, which I'm in favor of, try to eat mostly organic meat. And I typically, when I eat clean meat, I eat fatty cuts of meat because that some of that animal fat has shown a benefits for us, for, for our bodies. But if I can't find organic meat, then I eat the leanest meat possible because a lot of the impurities are stored in the fat. So that's just something I, I look at. That's really wise. Thank you for for sharing that. That's something that we focus on over here in the mustard household is we, we do eat meat and I tried to buy everything as organic as possible and some prime rib the other night. Oh man, <laughs> it was so mm-hmm. good. And that's, I think the fattiest cut of beef and oh, it was so good. Yeah. Um, yeah, these are great, great tips. I couldn't, I mean, I'm just nodding my head over here going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what else you got anything else? Like what else? Yeah. Yeah. Can you share? yeah this is so, so, good. so this is the foundation, right? By the way, uh, Lisa, I have to say you look way younger than 47 years old. So great job. Thank you. So you're doing something right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Now, moving on to other tips that I have. So we covered the three foundations, right? We talked about sleep, we talked about nutrition, we talked about movement. So that's your base of the pyramid. You've got to get that in place. Then we talk about some of the factors that are aging you faster and how you can slow down your own aging. And it's not that complicated when we look at what's happening. The number one thing that happens to us as we get into our older years, and by older, I mean 40-ish and plus, which I'm in as well, is that inflammation increases in our body. And inflammation is also known as inflammaging because it's aging you from the inside. And there's multiple reasons inflammation can happen. Let's say you're out running in the park or running on the road, I should say, and you fall down and you scrape your knee. Well, that's inflammation because your body is responding to that cut or that bruise and is trying to heal it pretty quickly. But that is acute inflammation and that's really important for us to survive. What happens is that we get that kind of inflammation inside our bodies for long term. It's called chronic inflammation. And that it leads to aches and pains that a lot of people complain about. But really that ages us, that destroys collagen from the inside. And the worst part is we can't see it happening. And that's why we think everything's okay. So one of the first things that I recommend to people is to you know, either get a test for inflammation. There's a test called CRP next time you go to a doctor. Uh, the C-reactive protein test will tell you inflammation. But as a preventive measure, what I do is I eat a curcumin supplement. And curcumin comes from turmeric, which is an Indian herb used in a lot of spices in the Indian subcontinent in East Asia. But there, it's got a little compound in it called curcumin. Uh, unfortunately, there's not enough curcumin in the turmeric that you would eat. So it's easily available in a supplement form. And I take that every day. That natural substance has been shown to fight inflammation really, really well. And so no drugs, all natural, just a supplement that you can, uh, you can take once a day. So that's one. Hey friends, I have a question for you. Do you want less wrinkles or perhaps you want to improve hydration, your skin tone and firmness? How about healthier hair, nails, gums, and eyes? If you're nodding your head and saying, yes, Lisa, then I think you will be interested in what I've been using for the past few months because the changes in my skin are so noticeable. You can even head over to Facebook and see my before and after pictures. So what is it? All right, it's the only liquid biocell on the market which holds seven international patents, provides 18 phytonutrient-rich superfoods and ceramides, tastes good. It really does. It's 10 calories per serving and it's also dairy free. You guys, it's completely changed my 47 year old skin. Plus it's helped me with some aches and pains that I've accumulated over the years of, well, 
Well, being a human, other benefits can include a healthier gut, an improvement in your skin's microcirculation and in your muscle tone, and a reduction in hyaluronidase. I hope I said that right. Hyaluronidase, the enzyme that can make your skin age. Are you ready to learn more? Okay, text the word skincare to the number 888-111. That's the word skincare to 888-111 or head to my show notes and grab the link there. Plus, you'll even get $10 off your first order. So you guys, be sure to check out the show notes or send me a text. The second one that I would look at is glycation, which is such a big problem in today's society. Lisa, as you know, um, you work with a lot of people. There's a lot of easy carbs that come, that are available to us, right? You go to the grocery store, all the middle aisles are easy carbs. You have to go far to get your greens. And so when people get, you know, easy carbohydrates or they're eating pizza or burritos, for example, or tortillas, what happens is that that excess sugar that goes in your body, your body can only take so much sugar into the muscles and it can only take so much sugar into the liver. The rest of the sugar is floating around your bloodstream. And so then what happens is the sugar starts attacking your fat cells, your DNA, it starts attacking your proteins and proteins are the worker bees of your body. They do all the work. We have thousands, tens of thousands of proteins in our body, but these sugar molecules start attacking and locking up the protein so the protein can no longer function. So now you've got this, you know, this beautiful protein that's made up of 20,000 amino acids that's supposed to do something, but now it's gummed up because of the sugar. So it's really bad what excess sugar does to us. And therefore, as much as we can, as much as we can, we should reduce our intake of carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates. And if we do take a lot of carbohydrates, there's some supplements you can take like carnosine, Mm -hmm. which allow you to unplug the sugar molecule from your protein. So that's very important. So those are two, I have two more, but uh, I want to see if you have any questions. Yeah. So I'm curious, would we lump in alcohol into that category when you talk about the sugar that you want to wa- avoid? Like why? Yeah. I mean, wine, I guess I'm thinking wine because I know there's more sugar in wine yes. than, you know, like vodka or something like that. But yeah, absolutely. I'm- absolutely. There's sugar in wine, as you mentioned. So again, looking back at people that live the longest lives, they are very, very moderate with their consumption of alcohol. So one to two cups of wine or glasses of wine a day is the most I would say people should have. Of course, when you're younger, you go binge drinking all the time and that's okay. But I think as you mentioned, Lisa, at 40, something happens and we go, "Mm, I need to focus on my health more. Right. Yeah. And you just don't recover like you did in your 20s. Right. Really don't. And then you're on that path of dehydration, lack of sleep. It's for me, I just can't. I mean, I just can't do it anymore. And not that I really want to do it anymore. I just, my body doesn't, I mean, don't get me wrong. I definitely enjoy an adult beverage, but not like more than one at yeah. a time these days. So yes. Okay. That, yeah, that was my main question. I wanted to make sure that our listeners heard that because I have a lot of friends mm-hmm. in their forties and and that's one of the hardest things I think for them to, to cut back on. Just don't take away my alcohol I hear. And I'm like, well, I'm not really trying to take away your alcohol. Let's replace it with something that's a little better for you or healthier mm-hmm. for you. And maybe won't give you the same type of experience that, you know, two glasses of wine would, but I guess, what's the trade-off? What are you going to sacrifice, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I'll touch on this, right? There's uh, ethanol, which is Mm -hmm. what alcohol has, is in large quantities. It does a number on your liver. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not helpful to your liver. Your liver is the organ that's detoxing your body, that cleansing your blood. And so it's important for you to have a healthy liver at all times and fatty liver disease is becoming more and more prevalent in today's society. So anything you can do to help your liver is a plus. Mm -hmm. However, there's this concept of hormesis, which is anything that hurts you, not anything, but most things that hurt you in bigger dosages or bigger quantities can actually be helpful if you take them in small enough dosages. A case in point would be, you know, a sauna. You can go, if you are in that heat all day long, you'd probably die. But for 20 minutes, a sauna is incredibly beneficial Mm -hmm. to you because you release the toxins, it helps you sweat, it gets your metabolism going. Same thing with cold, same thing with exercise, right? It's you're putting some stress on your body that long-term can kill you if you keep doing it. 
But in short bursts, it's actually good for you because it allows your body to become stronger in that range and to respond with its own antioxidant capacities. So one to two cups or, or glasses of wine is fine, but try not to do any more than that yeah. because they do do a number on your liver. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that point. What did you call it? Hermesis? Hermesis. Her, like, how do you spell that? H- yeah, it's H-O-R. Okay. M-E-S-I-S. So this applies okay. to heat. This applies to cold. This applies mm. to fasting. This applies to exercise. Right. And some people lump in alcohol there as well. Yeah, no, I can definitely see what you mean by that because staying in a sauna too long, going out and working out for too long, staying cold too long. I mean, I can relate. I mean, I've mm-hmm. experienced what that what that feels like when you've done those things for too long. So yeah, that's fascinating. Okay, cool. I'm just learning so much. <laughs> I love it. And yeah. what I love even more is that, you know, right today, everybody, you're just getting like a snippet of Faraz's world. But if you go and listen to his show, you can get, he interviews experts he sends out an email. I mean, it's just chock full of information. So, and speaking of information, you have a summit coming up. So tell us, tell us about that before we get into other tips. Yeah, absolutely. So as I turned 40, Lisa, I was thinking <laughs> this new decade, what am I going to stand for? How is my body going to be? How is my mind going to function? How's my vitality, my energy level is going to be? And I kept asking myself this question and I said, what if all the questions that I have, I'm sure, and I talked to some of my friends and they said, yes, I want to know everything you just said. And so I brought together some of the top experts in the world, more than 20 experts, to talk about each of these areas of anti-aging. So the, the question that we ask ourselves is this. This is the question that the summit seeks to answer, right? Even as you get older, how can you increase your energy? How can you have better skin? How can you have better hair? How can you have sexual vitality? How do you have a sharp mind and a healthy body, regardless of your age, right? And so these experts are coming together in an online summit, which is free for your listeners to register for, by the way. Just go to theantiagingsummit.com. No hyphens, nothing, theantiagingsummit.com. And there you can literally learn from free from 20 plus of the world's top experts, that each go dive, that each go deep into one topic each. So for example, one of these topics is going to be, you know, how some of your beauty products may be actually messing up your hormones. So how to avoid that, right? The other one might be, what is the right perfect skincare routine to look 10 or 15 years younger than your age? Uh, Third one is, what is the best way to boost your sexual vitality, even in your 40s, 50s, and 60s? So there's a lot of these very, very interesting uh, episodes or sessions that I I brought together because I was, I'm insanely curious about these things. And I know a lot of my listeners are as well. Yeah, that's fabulous. We will definitely put the link to sign up in the show notes. So if you guys didn't catch that, it will just, if you know, you'll be able to go to my website and look under Faraz's episode and you'll be able to register for it there. And it's completely free. And if you can't, is it a live or is it video? So if you're not on their live, you're sending out the, the replay. Yeah. Right? So if you, if you cannot make it live for whatever reason, we have the option okay. for you listeners to purchase an all access pass and then they'll have, they'll have access to these recordings forever. Oh, great. Okay. Fabulous. And I also know that you send out a awesome uh, newsletter. So how do folks get on your newsletter? Yeah, that's a great question. Mm-hmm. So if you go to antiaginghacks.net, antiaginghacks.net, mm-hmm. uh, on that page, you'll be able to register for the newsletter. I've got a free ebook you can download that will help you slow down your aging using some of these techniques I described in the interview. And then you'll get a weekly email from me that talks about some of the latest tips and techniques that I'm using to slow down my aging. And that are very, very practical. I don't talk about things that take tens of thousands of dollars. This is super easy, practical tips you can apply in your daily life. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So we will link to that as well in the show notes. You guys can go and just grab the email, sign up there. What else do you have for us today when it comes to best tips for aging in your 40s? Yeah, I've got two more. Okay, great. The third one is, and maybe this should have been the first one, but this is all about conquering or managing your stress. Mm. As you know, Lisa, working with people, as we get into 40 and beyond, if we are in careers, then the responsibilities are going up drastically. If we have kids and we're staying at home, 
then the kids are growing to where they have more needs. They need to be out playing sports. You, you're chaperoning them all weekend. They have, you know, unique asks. They need shopping. They need more things. They need more attention, homework. It's, it's Everything. crazy, right? <laughs> Everything. And so regardless of whether you're a homemaker or you're the corporate bigwig that's, you know, that has a lot of responsibilities, there's a lot going on in your life. And sometimes health gets thrown to the back end. But what all this leads to is stress. And so stress increases cortisol in your body. Cortisol causes all kinds of problems, but it also tells your body to store fat and it wastes some of your muscle. So you've got to get rid of cortisol pretty quickly. It doesn't allow you to sleep well and it causes a lot of downstream health problems as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what you can do, it's... It's simple to say how to manage stress, but harder to do because we get caught up in the moment of the stress, right? right. So you could do natural things. Again, take a walk in, uh, in sunshine, be around nature, greenery. You could do you know, these movement exercises like Tai Chi or Qigong. You can definitely do meditation. That's super easy. And if you don't have time for any of that, then you can take some adaptogens, mm -hmm. which are, all, again, all natural compounds that help your body regulate the stress response. One of them is ashwagandha, mm -hmm. which is very well revered in the Ayurvedic medicine. Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks are taking it. I take it myself, especially in stressful days. I don't take it every day, but especially in stressful days because it calms you down. And that's yeah. important. Yes, that's I used to take an adaptogen blend. I've kind of fallen off of that bandwagon, but I would like to get back on that. So thanks for that reminder. Yeah, I definitely absolutely. felt different. I felt better for mm -hmm. sure. I slept better too. It's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so stress. We want to work on keeping our stress because we're all going to have stress. Everyday yeah. life is stress, but it's just the, uh, the ebb and flow of our reactions to that stress mm -hmm. that we can. I love your tips. And I find that getting outside and taking a walk and just that really kind of brings my stress down. Just go get mm -hmm. some fresh air, change my scenery, you know, just yeah. get a, a new lens, a new perspective. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up. Absolutely. And I've got one more okay. on these tips is the fourth one is basically oxidation. And for people to think about this, it's what, what happens. Let's say you have a Christmas party at work, right? And there's one person that's super drunk, super drunk guy that's being creepy on every woman <laughs> at the party. And he's hitting on one girl and the next and the next. And it's basically what's happening in your body because when you have pollutants in the atmosphere, when you have other things that are coming into your body through your skin or through stress even, then they can cause this chain reaction where uh, one cell loses some oxygen and electrons, I just say, and to make up for that lack of uh, electrons, it will attack other cells and basically steal from them. So this starts this crazy cascade of problems in your cell where everybody's stealing from each other or hitting on you know, all the women at the party. Mm -hmm which causes problems in your, in your cells and, and it doesn't allow your cells to do their jobs. And that is why everybody's probably heard of antioxidants. Mm -hmm. That is what antioxidants do is they balance out these, these crazy cells that are just looking for the electrons, right? And so antioxidants are important because they help you balance against a lot of stressors. Let's talk about the stressors. There's smoking, there's pollution, there's too much sunlight. Yes, if you lay out in, uh, by the pool for two, three, four, five hours, you're getting a lot of oxidation in your body. So that's one of those. But mold can be oxidation. There's a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. You know, just pesticides in your food can be oxidatives. So limiting that as much as possible okay. allows you to live a healthier life. But if not, then you can take antioxidants that help balance out some of the damage that these guys are doing. So okay. Some of the best ones in terms of antioxidants is astaxanthin, which is made from underwater and it's made from some algae. So mm -hmm. it's really good. Uh, that's the one that I take and uh, a lot of folks I recommend to as well. Do you have a, a, a place where you prefer to get your supplements from or do you, is it one of those things where you like it from this company and you're, you, then you like another one from this other company or do you... Stay yeah. true to a brand. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's different. So for, yeah. at, for astaxanthin, there is a brand called BioAstin. It's, okay. made from, it's made in Hawaii. You can get that one. That's my favorite. For some of the others, I go with uh, Life Extension uh, or I'll go with Thorn. They make uh, good uh, supplements as well. 
Okay. I have to look and see what we have. I forget what my husband gets. Okay. In fact, if people sign up for my newsletter, my second mm -hmm. email that they'll get is some of my top supplements and where to get them. Oh, perfect. Well, there you go, guys. <laughs> That's super helpful. Is there anything else that I did not ask that you want to share? Because I, I mean, we could just probably talk for hours. Yeah, no, I think this is a great foundation. I want to keep it simple. We okay. talked about the three basics, right? Sleep, mm -hmm. movement, nutrition. Mm -hmm. We talked about the four ways you may be aging faster and how to slow them down. Inflammation is one, oxidation, glycation, or too much sugar. And mm -hmm. the fourth one is stress. Mm -hmm. So let's try to conquer these, these four. And then we talked about the summit, the antiagingsummit.com. So at the summit, will you go more into these topics? I'm guessing you've, you said you have over 20 experts. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so wow. Every expert is going to go deep into their topic so people can get practical tips mm -hmm. to apply immediately to reverse their aging, have more energy and look younger. This is fabulous. Well, I know I'm going to be there and I'm really curious about how you got all these people together and how the, t I want to know like the behind the scenes, <laughs> technical logistics that you've, that you've had to go through. Maybe that's a whole other podcast when maybe we'll talk about that down the road. I don't know, yeah, but yeah. that's, or we can that's talk, really cool. Or we can talk about that offline either, also. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much for Roz for being here. I just enjoy every time I chat with you, it's just, it's just great. And it's so wonderful to connect and to have you on the podcast. So thanks so much for being here. Likewise, Lisa. Thanks so much for having me on. Oh, you're welcome. Oh my gosh. That was such an incredible episode with Faraz. I learned so many things. I think the one I'm going to implement right away is turning off the Wi-Fi at night. I think that's a really good tip. And I never would have thought of that on my own. So you guys, I just want to remind you, if you want to sign up for the free anti-aging summit with the 20 plus health and anti-aging experts, be sure to head to my website or the show notes and grab the link there. Faraz is going to answer the big question of how do you build a healthy body, a sharp mind, have all day energy, look good naked and have beautiful skin and hair even as you age. I know that's a really big question. I can't wait to hear the answers. I hope to see you guys at the anti-aging summit. Well, that's this week's episode of the Midlife Magic Podcast. Don't forget to join us next time for another episode. Thank, Thank you for listening. listening.